Because I got hot. Because I got hot. La 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 da da da. I'ma stop singing this song because I'm hot. Say no to drugs. Guys, I am not endorf endorphing. I'm not endorsing getting high, doing drugs, anything like that. What I am endorsing or talking about today is the brain chemicals that we have. Uh, four of them actually is what I want to talk about in total, but today we're going to talk about two. Endorphins and dopamine and how they operate in our bodies and, and what they're doing at all times, even when we don't even know it. You know, we experience endorphins from a number of different stimuli. It, it might be food, it might be pain, it might be sex, it might be exercise, it might be something. Um, but what happens is when endorphins and what they do is they actually mask physical pain. So have you ever experienced like laughing so hard uh, and it feels so good, but what we're actually doing is we're convulsing our inner organs and then everybody laughs so hard until it hurts and you go, oh, stop, stop, stop. It's actually the endorphins running out and you're starting to feel that, uh, that you're convulsing your internal organs. Another thing that we talk about too is, and endorphins are huge from exercise, we also get that runner's high feeling. So what happens is runner's high actually occurs when uh, the endorphins and the feelings occur when you go from an aerobic state to an anaerobic state and your body starts going, give me oxygen, your muscles, your cells, everything in your body starts going, give me oxygen, give me oxygen, boom, runner's high occurs, we're like, I could run forever, I could keep running, and then the next day we go, oh my gosh, why did I run forever? That's like endorphin hits are, are what keep us going through marathons, you know, bodies tell us, stop, 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 and we're like, but I feel so amazing, I'm accomplishing things, yeah. Endorphins and endorphin creation in the body is key because it actually lowers cortisol levels and allows you to decrease feelings of anxiety and actually increase your immune system. So when you run, you get those endorphin hits, you're actually improving your body's whole function uh, overall. And that's why we see so many healthy people that go out and exercise and use their bodies like we're supposed to, right? Instead of this. Come on, I do this too much as it is. So you know that feeling you get uh, when you check something off a checklist and you get that you get that experience of like, yes, I did something. That's dopamine. That's when it kicks in. And so we create these to-do lists, some of us, some of us, this is for you list makers out there. When we write things off and we check them off and we check them off and we check them off. We're just getting constant hits of dopamine that keep us moving forward. Um, the historical reason for dopamine is actually to make sure that we get stuff done. Uh, historically, 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 the reason that dopamine existed was to make sure that uh, if we didn't have dopamine, we would we would never eat because we wouldn't remember, or, and there wasn't a guarantee we could find food. That's the main problem. So we would never eat. We would never go and find food. So dopamine exists to help us find food. Simple. Guys, we get dopamine when we eat food. So that's one of the reasons we like to eat food so much is that when we eat food, we get dopamine hits. When we, when we see something that reminds us of something that makes us feel good, our brains go, oh, I want to do that action that gets me that feeling because that's what we, what we do as creatures. Um, so let's do this as an example, uh, maybe, maybe in ancient times. Uh, so I go out for a walk and I look out there and I see an apple tree. And I see that apple tree in the distance. I go, ooh, food, sustenance, substance. I, I really want to go get food. I'm hungry. So I look at that apple tree and I set my focus. I set my goal on it and I go, I'm going to go get some food. So boom, hit a dopamine right there. Now, start walking towards that apple tree and I'm going, mmm, that's going to be so good. It starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Boom, another hit of dopamine. I'm, I'm walking towards my goals of getting food. Walking, walking, walking. Boom, another hit of dopamine. I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Walking, walking, walking. Boom, finally get to the apple tree and I'm like, yes, apple tree. You know, if we were talking about today's standards, it would more be like, yes, Froyo, right? Come on. It's something that we eat. It's something that we ingest. It's something that's giving us this positive feeling and we're just driven towards it. And so we feel so good. Um, then maybe we feel kind of bad after we eat whatever it is we were tracking down. We are hugely visually oriented animals. So we have to be able to see things. It has to be tangible. Um, the apple tree in the distance is tangible. Uh, you know, so seeing your goals if you can't see your goals as a human being, it's really hard to get motivated. It's really hard to get inspired. So this is why we're told, you know, you must write down your goals. You must look at them every day. You must 
have them be tangible, something that you can visualize and see and feel. Um, the apple tree is a perfect example. So, uh, or a McDonald's is a perfect example. Terrible. No. Um, but it's something that we can see. It's something that's tangible. It's something we can drive ourselves forwards. But we have to look at them every single day so we continue to get that momentum and that dopamine in our brains to keep us trudging forward. So at the beginning of this, I talked about dopamine and how it's important for list makers, right? So uh, for those of you list makers out there, what we do is we go and we, we take a little list, we make a list of things we need to do, and off we go to go accomplish those things. Um, so what happens when you're out and about and you made your list and then you, you are walking down the street or driving down the street or whatever and you see a dry cleaner and you go, oh, I needed to do that. So you go, you go, get your dry cleaning done, you go, you walk out of the dry cleaner. What do you do? Take out your list. Write down dry cleaning and check it off. Boom, dopamine hit. We achieved something. We feel so good when we check those things off of our list that we even write things down. Oh, I brushed my teeth this morning. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to check it off my list just because I want that hit again. Uh, and, and it just keeps us driving forward. You know, dopamine is all around us with these advertisements that we have, with these movies that we have, with these flashbang, bing, buzz, whirl, whatever you want to say. Um, well, an interesting thing is that ADD and ADHD has risen by 66% in the last 10 years. Guys, ADD and ADHD is a frontal lobe disorder. See my big shiny forehead here? So if it's a frontal lobe disorder, are you telling me that 66% of our youth have developed a frontal lobe problem in the last 10 years? Doesn't work that way. Misdiagnosis. So when you look at like a the symptoms of a dopamine addiction to technology, what are the symptoms? Distractibility. Inability to get things done, easily distracted, shortness of attention. It's all the exact same thing, and it's the addictive quality of dopamine that's all around us today. Um, in an imbalanced system, dopamine is, sorry, in a balanced system, dopamine is hugely important, but, and it can drive us to do amazing things when we put our heads down and just get things done. But in an imbalanced system, it's extremely dangerous. We just want more and more and more. It's, a, it's addictive just like a drug. And honestly, we'll do anything that we need to do to get another hit of that dopamine. Um, other things that stimulate dopamine in our lives and in our bodies, um, alcohol, nicotine, gambling, cell phone. Yeah, some people were going, oh, that doesn't apply to me, that doesn't apply to me. And then you say cell phone and everyone goes, oh, dang. <laughs> so what do you do? You wake up in the morning. If, if you wake up in the morning and you crave a drink, you might be an alcoholic. If you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is grab your cell phone, you might be addicted to dopamine. So if you walk around your house from room to room with your cell phone in hand just waiting for it to buzz, bing, beep, whirl, twirl, whatever, you're probably addicted to that dopamine. You know, we hate emails, but we love the bing, buzz, burp, bleh, burp. We love it all, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is to draw attention to this problem because what did I do when I got up in the morning this morning? Sat on my cell phone for 15, 20 minutes doing nothing, just just feeling that dopamine technology addiction uh, and not really getting anything done. So I was negatively using the dopamine addiction just to feed myself that feeling rather than harnessing it and, and taking it and using that dopamine to go find food like a caveman or whatever you want to say. So again, I, I'm not endorsing the getting high. These chemicals are going through our bodies all the time all the time every day so we might as well understand more about them and figure out how to harness them and use them to our advantage rather than um, suffering because how many times have you guys spent two three four hours on Facebook Facebook is a dopamine hit and a half ding 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 so and so just sent you a message oh somebody liked your comment we love likes we love likes so but for no reason it's just this constant dopamine hit I can't explain to you why we like a dope why we like likes but we do